Eradicator. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Irad, and so of course it's Friday. The time has come to check out the latest episode of Inside Star Season. It seems that this episode is about peaceful activities that we are going to have the opportunity to do in the pyro system. So let's check it out. Something that I am quite excited about because, well, quite frankly, I don't always do combat. Very often I do peaceful activities as well in the verse because it's just relaxing. I just want to chill, right? So let's check it out. There's a lot you can say about the upcoming pyro system. It's dangerous, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's lawless, certainly. But it's not all just chaos and carnage completely. It's also people just trying to make their living where they can in a place that's challenging and pretty different from the adjacent Stanton system. Of course, right? If it was only, you know, criminals, it would be, well, it is a living hell, but it would be totally unlivable, right? Nobody would be there. Even the criminals, they need regular people to sustain themselves, right? Who is going to provide them food? Who is going to provide them, you know, trade, commerce, the things that they need, right? So that they need, of course, the people who choose to go to Pyro and live in Pyro, if, if it is their choice, well, they're not really, you know, uh, very uh, clear in their heads, I would say, right? Because who would do that? That's insane to live with criminals. But nevertheless, right? It seems that people want the freedom, they want to have the opportunity to live without having some kind of big government off their backs, and that's something that I could understand as well. And so uh, these are the people who also make up the population of the pyro system. From repairing your neighbor's generator to supporting the nearby farmers, there's much you can do to be a social and upstanding citizen for pyro's prosperity. Oh dear. That doesn't look very good already. <laughs> All those deep skulls. Look at that, there's fire, people in arms. Oh, there's Pyro 1! A big storm there. So the planets of Pyro are different from Stanton in the fact that they all have to deal with the Pyro star system being at the end of its life cycle, oh, emitting yeah. huge amounts of solar flare radiation, and we have to consider like what is that actually doing to each planet? Naturally, Pyro 1. Now, this is a living hell, but I think that this planet is even warmer than some of the warmest moons that we have in the power in, in the standard system as well, right? It's like over, well over 300 degrees, almost 400, right? It, it's it's insane going to Pyro 1. Closest to the sun is going to be the heaviest influence of the solar flare firing off. So how do those people live? But the people furthest away from the star. Oh, Paris. look at that! There is Pyro Six right there. Look at look at how tiny the star is, right, compared to how big it is when you are on the first planet. Six are going to have the least amount of radiation, but it's also going to be super cold at the same time. How do those people live instead? In Stanton, you have huge landing zones, which are very protected, very safe, lots of security. In but Pyro, there's no such thing. There You're you go. Very exposed to the danger. I think they said that the only place that does have security is the station that's right next to the jump point, and then that's basically Everything it, right? Everything is a lot more spread out. People aren't huddled into landing zones. They have the entirety of the system to roam across. There are no central sources of power in the Pyro Star system. It's all decentralized, and each outpost has its own different identity. And Look at how nice this looks. Oh, that's that's actually a pretty neat outpost. I would see not everything is is destroyed and in shambles, right? This one, hey, not too shabby. That's totally a place I, w I could stay, right? If it's where organized. What it means for you as a player as you go to these different places, should you be aligned with one faction, you can visit these locations. Yeah, these look like decent people. Should you align with another faction? Yeah, I like how you just got the multi tool like an actual gun. That's so funny. You can go to these other locations instead. You've got a lot more to do there. So instead of going down, doing a mission, flying away again, you can go down, do a mission, do another mission, do a third mission, and then go to another outpost on the same planet and do some missions there. So basically, you could just go to a place and choose to live there, right? You have a much more involved experience. So let's look at some of the places you'll be visiting. Oh, okay. They're going to show us those. So those are outposts. a small slice of life within the Pyro Star system. To oh, by the way, look at that. The new new MFDs in the Aurora are looking really nice. I didn't even have cameras there. Nice, nice, nice. nice. introduced to what it's like to live there. 
Yo, did you say it's a farm? Yeah, place to gather harvest of these. Oh, cool. Places to complete. Oh no, they have like the these cages for the, the body. Are we going to really be able to put bounties inside those cages? That would be us. Awesome. I know one day. Your missions? And ultimately your first introduction to how people live in the Pyro Star system. Wow. Farms. Look at those farms here. Those those poor plants, those crops here, they are having a hard time. <laughs> uh, probably one of my favorite ones, just because I really like the vibe of them. Wow, okay. Look at this. It's like a, a frontier with an actual farm and people going by their business and they're growing the, their own crops and foods that's going to be available in the rest of the power system. Or perhaps Stendhal too, right? It's the closest thing to a home feeling I think you'll find in Pyro. You feel like there's a, a smaller community living here. There's a lot more fields of crops. There's a lot more greenhouses. Yeah, oh, those, green ho those greenhouses, we saw that, right? Sometimes these are, they are growing things that are not for eating. So we've got these like grub farm greenhouses, which are really cool as well. Yeah, these ones, that's not for eating. <laughs> they tend to be in a lot more open, plain-like areas, big fields of crops around them. There is things to do, there's things to harvest, but it's also just the vegetation that kind of sits. This looks great. This definitely feels like, like a frontier on a lot of the desolate landscapes that we have in Pyro give you a little bit of this mini feeling of like a little oasis. There's one in particular. Yeah, right. This is not what I, what I was expecting at first when it comes to the Pyro system. I was, I was thinking maybe everything would be run down and chaos and civil war all over the place, right? The law of the jungle. It's still kind of like that, but it also... You know, places like that, they also give a little bit of hope, right? That not everything is hopeless in the verse and in, in the place like the power system where people can still organize themselves and have a decent life living together without necessarily slaughtering one another. Particular on Pyro 2 that's really nice and has this really nice vibe, that kind of like lazy windmill circling in the breeze on a plane that's just like feet, almost featureless apart from these few buildings on it. That really gives a, especially at sunset, like really gives an amazing vibe of like these people live in the ass end of nowhere, but are really trying to do their best That's to survive. That's very nice. There are oh. some goods that are only <laughs> even have like a little community place where people can eat and that's probably going to these are just probably going to be just props where we're not going to be able to actually use them. But still, um, Pretty cool vibes. What do you guys think of the vibes out there? Like in them. Pyro because of its unique star system. Oh. That, can that is, that's not for eating here. That's probably for sale in the Stanton system. Oh we dear. ship back to Stanton. <laughs> we have a... That's what I said, right? Unique objects or unique commodities that you'll sell back in Stanton, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> probably not legal. A whole bunch of new mission types that you'll be able to do that. And then we'll get around repairing pieces of machinery. Oh, cool. We have what we call charge drain technology. Oh, yeah, that's why they're using this deck, right? So it's actually for also for repairing stuff. ...coming over from Squadron, which enables you to transfer an electrical charge from one component to another. So oh. you can, like, jumpstart a generator, for example. Oh, that's cool. And it even has this little animation, uh, animation here that shows that you, what you are doing is actually making a difference. There's that's... scope for much more gathering type of missions, like going out into the field, collecting crops. Are we going to gather crops? Is that going to be a job in Star Citizen? Wow. <laughs> no way. It's, like, it's probably not going to pay a lot. Like maybe 1,000 FA UEC for 100 Pitemboos. I don't know. There's a big focus on non-combat at a place like a farm. Next, let's talk about scrapyards. The scrapyards are one of the few locations within the Pyro Star System where you can actually service your ship that is not on space stations or LEOs. Oh, so it's like, okay, so we can get it repaired. A bit like the outpost in, Star in Stanton, right? Except that we don't have such outposts in Pyro, so that's the job that they're going to be feeling, perhaps. We'll have more scrap in a scrapyard, which you know, makes a lot of sense, but we've got the towering cranes with derelict mm. spaceships So the in same there. cranes that we the see at Brio, right? spaceships being pulled apart. And we can see that there is a certain order to things where 
things get disassembled and moved around and where your aircrafts are getting refueled and repaired. There will be a little shops as well to kind of get nice. you on the way for your journey. And we've got... Now, I really wonder, because it's pyro, right? I wonder if the prices are going to be more expensive than Stenton or cheaper than Stenton. But they definitely cannot be the same because there needs to be some kind of difference, right? I would say that everything needs to be way more expensive than Stenton because of... especially. I mean, things that are not produced locally need to be way more expensive because nothing's produced there, right? They have to import everything from the other systems, in this case, the Stenton system. But at the same time, things that are produced locally need to be much cheaper than something that you would find in the standard system. But if you want to sell them in the standard system, then it needs to be more expensive, right? Buy low, sell high. It's the basic law of commerce, I think. And it, it needs to apply also for the Paro system, right? Things that can be find, found in, in Paro but be bought for a reasonable price in Stanton, you know, sell them for a high price in Pyro as well. But the risk is that, of course, it's going to attract pirates, right? People are going to want to rob your hole so that they would do the trade instead of you. These large landing pits in all the scrapyards that are unique to the scrapyards, which are the big sort of sunken pits for repairing, rearming, refueling. <laughs> that, that, though, might they needs a little repair. Kind of unique, okay, this is a scrapyard because I know that there's a landing pit here and they're the only types of outposts that have those. Landing. Now we have again the, uh, the new MFDs here inside. That's the Buccaneer, isn't it? Or the Cutter. Here you're able to interact with Crash for services, refuel your ship, repair your ship. All right, so it's basically nothing new, right? Same old, same old. Even rearm your ship as well. In addition to servicing your ship, you can also service the scrapyard itself. You've got to use your charge and drain tools to be able to repair pipes. So, I know, I know people are going to be complaining. Oh! It's another beam. We have beams for everything. Beam simulator, right? That's what they're going to be saying. In the end, the multi-tool is not the main purpose of Star Citizen. The main purpose of Star Citizen is to fly ships, maybe do some FPS combat. This is like a tertiary type of gameplay, an afterthought, if you may say so. So that's why, as far as I'm concerned, I don't mind all the beams here. It's cool, right? We can do something else from time to time, but I don't know anyone who is going to make this their main activity. I don't know anyone who is buying Star Citizen for this. It's just, it's just it's repair ridiculous. Repair canisters, any faults in machinery, etc. It's very much about taking things apart and organizing them and shipping them off again. But unlike the landing zones within the Sentence system, there is no air traffic controller. There is nobody to filter out where you can go. You simply choose a parking space, you land there, you service your ship, and you must fly out. The I like those new pits. mission type that we have is salvaging, but in first person. So you don't need to oh. be in a ship. You it will be something that you can do on foot. So salvaging all these. So how does that work? We get the RMC in our backpack, right? And then we sell the RMC. It's probably not gonna be worth all the money. Or it needs to be much faster with a little multi-tool like that. So we can do a lot of the little trips back to uh, the broker with the RMC in our backpack. Various panels which have turned up at the scrapyards in order to process them. Another piece of non-combat gameplay at scrapyards might be repairing machinery. Mm -hmm. We have a system which uses... Oh, cool, right? Prius your repair... Um, Prius fuses. Oh, so that's what fuses are going to be for. Not just your ship, but also repairing other stuff that is going to be uh, coming across. The resource network and engages it in missions. So you will be able to, so for example, if here. there's a broken piece of machinery, you will be able to find a working piece of machinery, rip components and fuses and parts out of that. Apply. Oh, that's ridiculous. So basically, you <laughs> you steal fuses from one piece of machinery to repair another one. So then there's going to be another one that's going to be broken, and we're going to need that another fuse from somewhere else. This is like a never-ending circle, which is why maybe trading fuses from the Stenton system to Pyro might also be a good idea. Buy it to the broken one and make that run instead. But of course, you've broken the first machine by doing that. Without yeah. landing zones in the Pyro Star system, we're using scrapyards to be able to help service your ships so that you can navigate to other locations on the planet as well as get back up into space as well. Wow, that is a really beautiful... Oh, look at that, those contrasts here between light and darkness. I love this. But the largest concentration of player activity is going to be happening at the trade posts. Oh! 
Well, they the have trade tra posters. Oh, where the. Oh, nice. Player is going to be dealing with trade and commodity. Oh. Oh. Look at how nice this looks. Oh, there's like an actual street, right? Oh, that looks quite well organized as well. This is like a little town, a village. Organizing themselves between different groups in order to purchase different food, water, ship weapons, ship components, armor, grenades, med pens, whatever, you name it. It's it basically the same stuff here. that what you they find at the stations, quite right? heavily on hauling, delivery, and shuttling goods around. Trade posts are organized by several different factions within the Paris Star system. At these different locations, you might find different inventory, different perks, different goods. So if you're aligned with Citizens for Prosperity, you might visit locations such as Jackson Swap and Pyro 2. Nice, I think I've been there before. In, uh, in, I, remember, I remember this place. Uh, I remember I was stuck there in the Pyro playtest. I was stuck there during a solar eruption. I didn't know where to hide. And I, I took so much damage because I was just, just in the room inside. And it, you're not protected, right? There need to be some kind of bunkers on the ground where you could be protected from those eruptions. I just had no idea. I, was, I thought I was... If I stayed indoors, I, I, I'll be protected, but I, I was not. Well, Connard View on Pyro 6. Oh. Connard View is in a very cold location. That's very inhospitable. Oh, but yeah, people still need to cold. be able to service and trade and do things around this planet. You can find different goods, different resources there, all being sold. Oh no, who wants the, who wants the reclaimed water, right? That's so gross. <laughs> oh my, I'm totally going to bring my own water from Stanton. <laughs> At this location. As Connard View is sheltered within the crater, it is also a safer location away from other headhunter gangs nearby. So you've got fewer people competing for your wares or trying to pirate from you either. Are there going to be also local inventories? Like, for example, um, I wonder if, if when we are going to be landing, uh, there are going to be freight elevators also? Because if we buy and sell stuff, like commodities as well, they need to be freight elevators too, right? Because that's how Star Citizen works now. Jackson Swamp is sheltered between these two different cliff buffs, offering them lots of protection. Wait, 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 wait. I think we had a nice view from outside. I'm not seeing any freight elevator, though. It doesn't seem like they've had... I mean, the footage could be old, right? Maybe it could be from like a year ago or something. Protection. And through there, we went for a spaghetti western style main through fair with lots of different landing. Okay, let's let's stop here. I'm still at the entrance right there. There's the mule, obviously, for carrying little boxes. I don't see any freight elevator. Heads around, and because it's well established, it's got some nice defensive measures so that it. Okay, let's see here. No, they got those those farms still. Hmm. It can't be immediately attacked by any rogue factions within Pyro. But they do have storage access, so there is a local inventory, though, where you'll be able to put stuff. It doesn't seem to be any freight elevator, though, so we can still come there and store a lot of uh, Vestal water. Jackson Swap, it's a hard environment that these people live in. It's not an easy living. Visually, it echoes like the rest of the sort of art style that we call the sort of frontier art style. If we look at the buildings, we see that there's a lot of stucco elements, there's a lot of makeshift little knickknacks that people have gathered from all around uh, the, the Pyro system. It looks nice though. It's a mixture of that hard scrabble life and people trying to make the best of what they have and repairing things over and over again and like replacing things that break. Yeah, it still looks great. That's the kitchen. I love the kitchen. You can see that the way that people are living there, it's very makeshift. Rooms were built to have a certain purpose, but have lost that purpose many years ago. There's still that sort of and they have another purpose, artisanal right? craftsman like elements in there as well with the rough weave rugs and things like that. So we're trying to really like push that homesteading. Oh wow, seems like a lot of people are sharing the same room. Vibe. Eh? 
in complete opposition to things like the space stations and you know microtech which up to now has been this very corporate lots of metal lots of angles lots of edges lots of sci-fi this is supposed to soften off all those corners you as a player can land whatever size ship you have oh purchase oh, whatever reclaimer. size ship uh -huh. components and ship weapons you might want to okay. have what about commodities? You can visit the local warehouse or um, order any potential things that you might need to have, commodities, food. Okay, so they do have commodities there. That's what I was thinking, right? But what about what about the freight elevators? This has gotta be one. How much is uh Astatine, by the way? Uh-huh. Two point okay. Etc. where anybody needs to be able to get something, purchase it, collect it. This is where all the players are gonna be collecting. But maybe you align yourself with headhunters oh. and you visit locations like Garner's Deal and Gordon Riviera. Garner's Deal and Gordon Riviera. I mean, especially Gordon Riviera sounds like a pretty nice place, but it doesn't look like a nice place at all. Look at this, like a, a big bonfire in the middle. Like That definitely looks like some kind of pirate outpost. Garner's Deal is a smaller... I even have the barbed wire there. ...perched in Pyro 4's massive crater. It's oh. there as a stopgap between Pyro 3 and Pyro 6 because there is not much land mass around Pyro 5. Py um, yeah, Pyro 5, there it is, right? This is the gas giant. There probably are some... Some moons around that we can see. Pyro 5 is a gas giant. Look at that. Yeah, it's quite looks quite similar to Crusader, but with a totally different color pattern. And yet you need to have a midway drop-off to get from Pyro 3 over to Pyro 6 on the far side, because Pyro's star system is far larger than Stanton. Yeah, by the way, if, in case you didn't know, Pyro 4 actually does orbit Pyro 5, right? So it's still around Pyro 5. Gordon Riviera is one of those sleazy towns which is just full of CD people, absolutely mm -hmm. taken over by the headhunters. They butchered everything. They've changed how they want things to work. Okay, so not Trade nice posts people. Are possibly selling uh, slave pods and find other illegal goods, but it's just a central hub of like sleaziness. Don't judge them. <laughs> it is still built out of these this minimal things that are laying around. It's very a hodgepodge of different things that come together. What makes Golden Riviera different is yeah, it definitely that looks quite different, right? Now a tornado just went through the entire place. It is absolute chaos. A tornado? Wait a second. We're not. Gonna... <laughs> Can you imagine if one day CIG manages to pull actual weather effects like tornadoes in the game? That would be insane. Being around, things have rusted, and you will find mattresses of where people have been sleeping in the weirdest corners. We can see that the people that have been living in the space have really outlived this location a little bit. Yeah, the, the place needs to die. These are oh, once man. prosperous outposts that have since been like basically home invaded by the bad guys and taken over completely. So, so basically what they mean is that these kind of outposts are similar to the station that are out there in space, but on the ground. They gotta have the same vibe. Use a lot of like more like fire and lots of spiked kind of like cladding and rusty metal elements just to give that kind of I hesitate to say Mad Max, but kind of that more apocalyptic vibe. Yeah, it looks very apocalyptic. Jackson Swap, even though it is very improvised. It has a certain structure. It looks, look, they even have the nice streets around. This would be fantastic for racing, by the way. You know, PTV racing here, you're just like, zzz, zzz, this would be great. Underneath it. And Golden Riviera, just, this structure is nearly gone. It is really chaos, anarchy that this place really embodies. Oh, they have Jared in there. <laughs> That's so funny. Jared's in jail. The players coming to our locations should feel like they are encountering a whole new frontier where people feel a little bit on edge and they're curious about you, but they're also hesitant to meet you at the same time. Mm. There is no law, there is no jurisdiction, there is no protection. There is just you and people trying to get by and live their lives. Right, and it's just you and the people who know you, and if they don't know you, of course, well, who are you, right, stranger? Exactly, it's, it's the frontier. So, what did we learn vibes. this week? Well, we learned that Pyro is definitely going to be more complex than one might have thought. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this react. Don't forget to check out my other reacts on the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.